Hey you guys, welcome back to Southern Latitudes. I'm Robin and in the backyard and it's a beautiful day. It's a little muggy, but um, I was gonna say we're gonna be without rain, but it looks like it's coming sooner today. All that aside, I have some news and then I wanna give you, pass along some information that I learned over the weekend. So first thing is that um, my videos will not be of me working in the garden this week. I hurt myself in, in a bad way. And um, yesterday I was coming out of my shed that's behind me and it had just finished raining uh, pre-dawn and it was still quite wet. And um, I'll show you here. See that wooden platform right there? Uh, I was stepping down with my right foot to come out of it and my right leg continued sliding because it you can kind of see where there's moss you see the color change right in there that's where i just rubbed it all off the black is where it's still mossy and slippery and uh, so my right leg continued forward while my left leg got stuck inside the step here and um i had a tray in my hand i was bringing my trays out and uh, my knee ended up somewhere in between on the board. I mean, Buddy came right to my aid right away and I felt like nothing was broke, which was great. But I may have tore muscle in my knee. I'm still waiting for the swelling to get out of it. Uh, this is probably more than you want to know, but I am just not running immediately to the doctor because of the outbreak going on in my city. So I'm just being extra cautious and um, that explains, will explain why I'm not going to be out in the garden. <laughs> Here we are with my seedlings in this shed. This is just a quick little update. All my peppers are looking fantastic. Um, I put some seed in later and it's not germinating. The bullnose pepper, the lola, the corbacci, and the red marconi. And then these were my sunflowers that I transplanted. And when I put them out yesterday, they looked fantastic. When I went to bring them back in, something cropped the heads off of them all so i'm thinking that was a squirrel because that was in broad daylight this and it was up so i don't think it was a slug Ugh, just so frustrating oh i see my second tray this is a tray more of tomatoes this one looks like it's ready to finally come out and join the party with the pepper family and i i did start a little bit of corn um Gosh, that only looks like 75% germination. These are empty cells. My onions, uh, you saw these before. The Texas legends do not look like they're coming up at all. Um, it's possible they just need more time, but I, they don't look too good. These are my sunflowers. These are unknown. Looks like a pepper, though, um, just in there. And the bunching, evergreen bunching onions... And the red Creole onions look great. Whatever, um, this is sweet harvest yellow onions. Uh, that seed might have been too old and bad or something like that. Everything's coming along really good with the seedlings. Oh, let me watch my step. Be extra careful, although it's dry this morning so far. My biggest problem from yesterday was that it was very wet and slimy. You know how that is. Kind of like, have you ever been to um, somewhere where the rocks are slimy uh, near an ocean edge or river edge or something and you got to be real cautious? Well, you know, that's what happened to me. I was not thinking I was holding those trays, which I didn't drop the trays. <laughs> so I'm carefully walking you over to here past the uh, compost pile because I got something special to show you. Um, and let me explain first. I wanted to do a, a video on midsummer, or some people call it a summer solstice pruning. And uh, I just went ahead and did it one night when it was cool after a um, rainstorm, a thunderstorm. So I said, oh, let me set this up a little bit be better before we go onto the tree. So I've been reading this book, Grow a Little Fruit Tree by Ann Relf. It's fantastic. It was recommended uh, by some friends on Instagram 
and then um, I found that David the Good had recommended it earlier that day in a video so maybe that's where everybody was getting it from but it is a fantastic little book I think it was only 10 to 12 dollars brand new you could probably buy it used too but um, it really emphasizes a lot about not just pruning pre-spring you know as you go into the spring but also um, there's emphasis on a midsummer pruning where you want instead of the energy of your plant to go all the way up into leaves and, and building all this you want to you know towards the end of summer or midsummer I I like the summer solstice is kind of a it's a guideline but not a hard line so and we're in Florida we still have a lot of heat left so I actually didn't do these until all, like the first week of August or so. So this came just a couple of months ago as a seedling out of a nursery and it had some really high growth on it. Well, I wanted it to put its energy into the roots and, um, and you want that for most of your fruit trees after they're done pushing fruit and blooms and then fruit and then you want the energy to go back into the roots to make a more uh, established and uh, solid healthy fruit tree in other words that's what uh, the book is emphasizing so this is my sun red nectarine and i actually pruned it well you know i don't know a month and a half ago i did this a long time ago actually because it was never going to set fruit or anything and it was putting out some really super high um leaders i guess is the proper name for that and um that's another thing the book talks about is when they're young you don't want them too high and uh putting all the energy up here into the roots that was the first part the second part is you want to keep your fruit trees you know where they're easily accessible um, I'm not growing here for sales production you know commercial production anything like that I just need enough fruit for the family so I want it easy to pick and that was part of my reasoning for chopping off this leader right here I want it the growth to come out more sideways hope that makes sense so that was already done and uh, of course it came to me with some nice uh, pruning already. Like for example, here you can see when it was shipped to me, it, it was pruned to here. Well, it has put on another two feet of growth here. Same thing with here. It was a very short little um, branch, side branch, I guess, or stem. And it has put on, this one's probably gone on over three feet. This one might be trimmed again soon, too. So that's emphasized in the book as well. You want these. It is raining. No, it isn't. Y'all, it's not raining over me yet. Oh, here it comes. But it's raining on half my lot. Anyhow, back to the pruning. So I pruned this tree a while ago. Now back to the, the Scarlet Beauty Plum. I'm going to keep going even through the rain because it's just like barely a shower so I just pruned this one about less than three weeks ago and it, it just got in the ground a month ago so I took it down it was way too high and I wanted to put all of its energy into the ground oh you see my brace there into the ground well then I noticed this week it has put out blooms isn't that funny it's got new growth too as well up here which is great these other branches will get stronger in here and then this will be the new growth for it to put some um, future blooms in the spring with let's finish up in the shed so i asked around on some of these facebook community groups and uh, i'm like does anybody have a scarlet plum does it just bloom and fruit once a year or am I misreading it is it sometimes twice a year um, is this normal so I had some great feedback that I want to pass on to you guys which is that sometimes after a summer solstice bloom or a midsummer bloom 
you will get a second flowering on some of these fruit trees. Now, it was advised to me that the blooms need to come off or at least no fruit set um, this year. Let it put its energy into the roots. That makes sense. But if it happens again next summer, I'm, you know, able to keep a fruit or two. Uh, I don't want it still to put too much emphasis in the in the growth of the branches and the fruit too but I still want to kind of keep that energy going towards the roots so I may just do a little bit you can end up with plums by Christmas if you do this now the other thing I learned from another person I had multiple sources of uh, people giving me information and I'm so thankful for that you guys are fantastic on these groups where you help us um, another thing is like for up to three years after coming out of a nursery, your tree, your seedling can be very confused. And so uh, expect the unexpected, in other words. Um, it just, they behave weird and we fall in that category for sure. But then it was nice the other uh, person came along and said, you know, it's happened to him before. And um, a very mature, like five, six year old tree can definitely give you a lot of fruit for Christmas. And I thought, oh, that'll be nice and something we can look forward to in the future. I'm assuming this tree is at least a good two years old. And I'm I'm thinking that this spring will be its third season. I'm just kind of giving it a rough birthday, uh, even though I don't know for sure. But it was pretty tall. It was over six feet tall when I brought it home. Anyhow, I just thought you guys would like to know that information if you have uh, any stone fruits and fruit trees around your property. I'm still very brand new. I've not ever uh, eaten one of my own homegrown fruits yet, but I'm hoping to change all that this spring. Everything's in the ground and ready to go for next spring. So again, I just want to emphasize this great little book, Grow a Little Fruit Tree by Ann Ralph. And... Um, Use your local resources, your Facebook resources and social media. There's a lot of people out there who know what they're doing. They're doing really good with it. And I'm thankful for you guys. So take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next one.